we were speaking about object. Uh, when you access a property, if the property does not exist, uh, like in this case, uh, the attempt to access will give you undefined as a value. So if you, if you try to access a uh, director before this line here, the, the value resulting from console.log movie director will be undefined because there is no property called in that way. Mm? So if you need to, to, to use that, you have, you have to check mm, with if, if the property actually exists or not. Mm? We have already saw that this last time, but now it's the right moment to repeat it to iterate on an object, on the properties of an object, you can use for variable in the object. Again, for the arrays, as we have seen with the score exercise, is for variable of array. Mm? So in for object, of for arrays. Mm? So here there is an example uh, with books here. Mm? Uh, so here. Uh, let a in an object x and y console.log a will print x and y mm. if you want to access the property so the name of the property if you want to access the property you should do for instance like this mm. so we can we can try to, to do that in our example. So here, let's comment. Okay, let's okay, let's do it after this. Um, so for mm -hmm. we have our movie for let's say um, const property in movie. We can say console.log prop and it will print title, genre, duration and console.log prop movie of prop and it should print avatar, sci-fi and uh, this number with a lot of zeros. And we can write it in this way, or we can use um, template literal. Mm? And so we can write mm, dollars prop is dollar the value, mm, movie prop. Mm? So we can skip this line here for instance and if we run this you see the title is avatar genre is sci-fi and duration is three million whatever it was the variable contains the key if you want to access the value you have to do the name of the object and accessing the key ac accessing the value through the key of the object with the bracket or with the dot notation hmm? so, you know sorry in this case with the bracket not with the dot not notation hmm? because this is a variable prop is a variable that contains the name of the property So this is for cycling. If you want to access the keys or if you want to access only the value, mm -hmm. there are two methods. One is called keys of an object that give you uh, an array with just 
the keys of an object as a string and the other is called entries hmm? this one here that give you all the, the value and the all the pairs key values as an array of array hmm? so with entries you have a big array with every cell of the array another array with a couple key and value hmm? so in this example uh, we would have like title and uh, uh, genre and duration and with entry we will have an array a big array the first element in the array is another array with title avatar then another array um, genre sci-fi and another array inside this big array um, duration and three million how to cop to copy object as similarly not equally as for arrays so the assignment doesn't work it doesn't make a real copy you just copy the pointer the reference if you want to copy you can use for instance this function here mm, that is called object.assign that is again a very powerful function not only for copying but also for doing uh, other operation because by definition object dot assign assign all the properties from the source to a target and the target could be an existing object or a new object hmm? so if the target is a new object copy all the properties from an existing object into an empty object so the empty object will have the the new um, properties and so you you made a copy otherwise you are going to merge the properties of one object into another object and the results is returned the results of operation is returned so it's not changing the target object is returning the new object so and then this is a shallow copy it's not a deep copy so if you have an object as a value of a property then that object is not copied as well with this method um, so let's see this um, so if we want to create uh, um, a movie another movie same movie we can say object maybe const say movie we can say object dot um, assign target and source so if we want to copy we want to assign all the properties of movie to an empty object so we are making a copy so we assign the property of the movie to the empty object and then we return the results of the operation uh, instead if we have maybe um, if we want to add the properties so uh, more detail, detailed movie it's object dot assign hmm, uh, movie and then we can maybe assign another property budget um, so the results of these if I wrote it correctly um, detailed movie hmm. should be that we assign the properties of this object that is just budget to the properties of move and returning hmm, all the other properties all the joint project properties in this moment So let's run this. Okay. 
so we have the two initial avatar then the four with title is avatar general avatar and then we have the new object same movie that has exactly hmm, like the original movie and then we have the tail movie that has title general duration and also budget that is the merge of the two object hmm? so this assign actually assign properties to another object and it could be used for copying um, among the other things and so on mm. uh, there is clearly another way that is more recent uh, starting in 2018 so up to now we are targeting as I said last time ES5 mm. uh, in ES9 mm, they added the spread operator for copying object mm. so it's also possible to copy object and to do all this operation with a spread operator mm. so uh, we can have uh, const again movie again avatar again and we can write the the spread operator and the uh, movie this should give us avatar again the the um, the another copy of the movie so notice that here this avatar again as the properties of budget mm -hmm. because while copying so assigning properties to an empty object will create a new object because the empty object is a new object uh, assign the property to an existing object will give a copy sorry will give the same object uh, the same original source object mm -hmm. so the same target object so the tail movie and movies are actually the same object so when here we copy movie we have also the budget property mm -hmm. so it's, it's 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 shown here mm -hmm. so here assign title javascript book and book 2 is actually the same as book mm -hmm. so this is used for copying when it's a new object because actually you are not copying you are creating a new object putting the properties and so the new object is a copy because it's it started as a new object when you have properties you merge the properties into the target object and it also give you another reference to that object if you want but you also have the change in the original object hmm? so writing this with a tail movie or without a tail movie it's the same so you can also if you want to remove this variable here hmm? and it will still add the budget to movie hmm? so if we try to do that and we print here movie we should see that steel movie as a budget of 10k and then we when we copy movie it will give us the budget again because it's a property that we added we added the properties here like we added the property here so actually these two things are the same as a result we are adding a properties a sign is is, is useful when you have multiple properties so if you have another object with 10 properties to assign to an existing pro property it will be easier than not write one property at a time hmm? like here for director if you want to merge property on a new object you can do it with a sign just add a new object as a target 
Mm? So a sign has also another signature that has a target, a source, and other values, as many you want. And the result is that all these will put in, a, in target, and if the target is an empty array, is an empty object, you create a new object. Mm? So very, very flexible for do all these things. Uh, and this is the spread operator that works also with portion of an array. So you can also concatenate, merge mm, existing properties with existing properties like here, others with new properties that you defined, maybe variables. Mm, so you can also merge. And also, uh, spread operator of an, uh, of an object, comma, another spread operator of an object, and it will merge the two objects. Mm. So spread operator does more or less the same thing that does object dot assign but in a more literal way hmm? um, well checking if property exists we can use the property in if you want to check if a property exists you can write hmm, author in book if the property author exists it will go um, true otherwise it will give you false and this works only for objects it doesn't work for arrays the in keyword in this way mm. and we'll give you again a boolean if it exists or not mm. clearly the key should be a string so you can check a string or a variable containing a string in the object um, how to create an object mm. with the object literal is the preferred way mm. you can create it with the object dot create you can create it with a new object and you create it with a constructor function that we are going to see in a moment okay so this is all about objects for now hmm? any question about objects then object has a lot of other methods so if you open the documentation on mdn and you look for objects like we looked for arrays uh, you will find all the methods that are in objects including a sign including uh, all of these including create etc question okay so let's close this I will then put all of these on on the repository but let's close this because it's not we are not speaking about objects anymore and maybe creates a function file just in case we need we need it functions uh, there are Okay, functions are one of the most important elements in JavaScript. As I told you before, functions are objects. So everything actually is an object. So function can be assigned to a variable, can be passed as an argument, and can be returned as a value. Mm. So you can have a function that returns another function. And this is totally normal for JavaScript. You can pass an argument like sort that accepts a function as an argument and you can also have a variable equal a function mm -hmm. even outside our object so really functions are extremely flexible because under heed and un under under hood are object mm -hmm. um, but the the idea, idea is that they delimit a block of code with a private scope so remember scope of last lecture that scope that we created uh, randomly last time a function create a scope mm? a different scope with respect to the to the to the method to the to the to the code that calls the function mm? and this will have a lot of implication later on there are three ways to define a function in javascript only three fortunately uh, the first one is the classic way that you can expect function name of the function in parentheses the parameter open brackets square bracket open uh, brackets and then you have the body of the function mm? code 
and this is the classic way um, so you can define a function so let's let's have a look here you have to define a, a function it's called square mm? and then get an element compute the square of that element there is something in math to do that but this is done manually so multiply the element per itself memorize the results in a variable and return the variable mm? so pretty c-like syntax just with the function keyword in the beginning then the name of the function any parameter return to return the element from the function and then at a certain point in your code you call the function mm? and squared with four will give 16 in the n variable mm? so during the execution of this program mm, you will have if you copy this on javascript tutor you will have uh, during execution of the function uh, x equal to 4 y equal to 16 and the return value will be 16. after the execution of this function you are not going to see any more x and y you are going to see n because n is here is after the function mm? so when the function ends mm, so the line after this one you are going to see n that is 16 because it's the result of the function and you're going to see an object mm, a, a sort of variable that is called square that has a pointer of something that python tutor represents as the body of the function just because actually functions are objects so when we are doing this we are actually creating a sort of variable called square that are, is associated to a function to an object that represents a function so this is not uh, readable here it's not visible here because this is the classic way in which we define function but um, I will go back here but there are other two ways of defining function another way of defining function in javascript that is called the function expression in which as you see here you actually define a variable and then say the variable equal function so you make that things that python the javascript tutor show you explicit but under the hood this is how it works even with the classical way of defining function uh, let me go back just to these things that are common to all the, the various definition of function parameters parameters you can have multiple parameters in a function they are separated by comma you can have a default value uh, in one or more parameter so if the parameter is missing when the function is called it gets the default value so in this case you have b hmm, here um, equal one so default value if b is missing is one if b is not passed to the function is one uh, parameter are passed by value um, parameter that are not passed and are not default will get undefined automatically hmm? so if we have a function a b c with b in uh, with one and you call the function with just a this is not giving you error but b will give you b will have um, value of one in the body of the function and c since it doesn't have a default value and it wasn't passed will get undefined in the body of the function but javascript is not going to tell you the variable the function has three value you pass to only one or there are two mandatory values and it's you passed only one it doesn't care anything you pass one uh, element to the function you are the developer you should know what you're going to do and is behaving accordingly so if you don't pass a variable uh, uh, you don't pass a value javascript thinks that it was made on purpose and that you had good reason to do that and it gives flexibility and power to do that and if you don't pass a value it's not a default value then it's undefined and then in the body of the function is treated as undefined so always good to check either define hmm, or check if a value is undefined especially if a value that has maybe a big impact on the body of the function uh, you can have also variable number of parameter by using the same syntax that is used for the spread operator but in this case it's called the rest operator hmm? so the spread operator unpack hmm, an object an array something into 
another into other things the rest operator is written the same way it just means that here after parameter 2 you can have some other parameters at least one maybe two three four eleven hmm? and so this is a syntax to say here you can expect other parameter i don't know how many others hmm? uh, so you can for instance here uh, cycle on this r as an object hmm? this is an object and then you can perform other operation hmm? um, so you can call this sum whole with four element five element two element 11 element 1 million element and it works in the same way so this apply to all the kind of function that we can define not only for the classic the other one is function expression that is uh, the function expression the normal function expression is more let's say used than the named function expression but they are the same written in a very similar way you define a variable equal a function and the function can have a name so const variable equal function square parameter and it is the named function expression or variable equal function open parenthesis with the parameter without the name of the function and the name of the function is the variable so in this case you can call fn as the function in this case too actually but you define also the name of the function so this is the what the, the most common way for if you use function expression this is the com most common way to declare function and in javascript typically function expression are two of the of the popular way so classic function are rarely used as a way to define a function function expression is popular let's say and the third type is also popular but it has some specific behavior different from function expressions so in some cases you cannot use the other the third option not you cannot but it it, it, it creates problem using the other option and function expression is uh, preferred hmm? so before if you remember in score in the in the sort here i created a function in this way this is a function this is not a function expression this is not um, a, a default function hmm? this is the third type of function that's called an array function that is here so the, let's let's finish with the function expression they are actually indistinguishable uh, on the javascript side with respect to classic function they behave in the same way under the hood mm -hmm. so javascript will see this as the name of the function and this as the name of the function in the classical way mm -hmm. square as a function cube as a function mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's, it's just a different way of writing the same thing so all the things apply uh, the difference is that here is more explicit with function expression that you are creating something new mm? because it's a variable equals something mm? so it's similar a variable equal an array a variable equal an object mm? so you are creating a new object actually of type function and return the results in cube so you can indeed call cube 4 here you call the name of the variable with the parameter of the function and again any variable in this case can refer to cube so you can store cube in an object a method you can pass cube as a parameter of another function you can return cube from another function it's a variable so any in any moment you can use the variable you can use also this and it doesn't matter if it, this contains five of a function from that perspective then the logic change clearly mm -hmm. uh, and yes when you just to put a bit of a terminology when you uh, pass a reference in an object so use a, a reference of a function in an object is called method as you can expect 
when you pass a function as a parameter to another function is called callback so a function passed to another function is called callback so sort as the first parameter that is the callback of sort so this is the terminology that JavaScript use a function passed as a parameter of another function is a callback and then you have arrow function that are written in a similar way to function expression but instead of writing function you write variable equal the parameters arrow so equal major and parentheses but this is the same thing of a function expression just with less charter so another way to define a function then let me repeat this there are differences so while classic and function expression there are no difference in behavior there are really just different way of writing the same exactly thing with the arrow function it's 90 percent the same thing so for the things that we are going to do now these weeks they are the same but at a certain point when things will become more complex and we will have a synchronous things and we will have the this keyword etc they actually behave a little bit differently with respect to the scope mm? so this is a preview but right now all these three ways are actually the same they define a function mm? in different way mm? and again the two more popular ways right now in javascript is either function expression or our function mm? uh, in the sort i use an arrow function parameter and the body and if the body is just one line you can omit the parentheses like in the sort and probably there is also an example here no uh, so again it's more or less the same things on the um, on, on the code um, and well you can clearly in another function define parameters so if you know you have no parameters you have to use the parentheses you cannot skip the parentheses empty parentheses if you have one parameter you can either skip or not the parentheses so const function equal the only parameter arrow or open parentheses the only parameter and with two parameter more parameter all the same things that we have seen up to now apply um, the return value of a, of a arrow function by default is undefined so if you don't use explicitly return the arrow function will get undefined in the variable so it will do what it needs to be done and then we return undefined if you want to return a value you have to use a return uh, only one value can be returned but you can return objects including function and arrays if you need to return more than one element in the returning of a function uh, if you with one exception uh, if you have just one line one operation one value to perform in an arrow function like in the sort method hmm, that we used we, you can skip the parentheses and the return so writing let fort x arrow function return square multiplied squared is the same things that writing square multiplied square because there is just one operation one result that is returned so if you skip that javascript will try to return the value of the single line that you have if you have multiple line it doesn't work you have to use the parentheses with return etc but if you just have one operation like in the sort of before you can just write without a return without anything hmm? so here you see we just a and b were the parameter then there were another function and this is the equivalent of writing parentheses return a minus b close parentheses this is the equivalent of what we wrote before hmm? because we just have one operation a difference and then it automatically return the result as you hmm? 
so you you can also have nested nest, nested function so function that is inside another function hmm? so for instance here uh, you have a classical function that is called hypotenuse that inside has a narrow function this is the definition of a narrow function so define square and this is the body of square and then here's call square so this is a function with inside another function and you can write it with uh, the arrow function or with the in any other format so including normal function or in, or function expression a function in another function and uh, notice these two things here that is about the scope so the inner function square is scoped within the external function it cannot be called outside of it so that means that until you are in hypotenuse in the hypotenuse function you can call square but in the moment in which you leave that function you are outside that function the square function does not exist so square square a scope only exists only inside function only in the scope that contains it so square exists here can be called here in hypotenuse cannot be called here hmm? after the function after the function can only be called oh, hypotenuse not square hmm? but square hmm, can access the variable of the function that contains it hmm? so if square needs can access a and b because the inner function can access the outside the, the function is the outer function so the function is outside hmm? so just to repeat the inner function exists only in can be accessed only in the while it's in the scope of the outer function not outside hmm? you can call square in hypotenuse you cannot score square in other parts of the code and the inner function can access to the variable of the outer function, not vice versa. And here we have a fundamental concept in JavaScript um, that we are not going to use explicitly, maybe, but we are going to met sometime. That's called closure. Hmm? So this is the definition of closure. A closure is a name given to a feature in a language in a programming language by which a nested function executed after the execution of the outer function can still access the scope of the outer function so the square function if it's executed after the hypotenuse function so even if the hypotenuse function has ended the execution can still access to the variable of the hypotenuse function even if hypotenuse is already done and executed so this is the definition somewhat cryptic as is written in the title but it's one of the most one of the important concept um, and here we see an example of the closure in practice so JavaScript used this scoping, the scope that's called the lexical scoping. So each function defines a scope for its own variable. And as I said before, the nested function can access to the scope of the enclosing function. Hmm? So the inner can access to the outer, hmm? not vice versa. But every function object, because it's still an object, remember the scope of where it's defined. I, I like a bit of memory oh yes i was defined in that specific scope so i still keep for a bit that scope with me hmm? even after the case when the external function is not longer active it's written in the code but it's not longer executed hmm? and so here you have an example and this is possible by the fact that the function are object and so let's look here what happens here you have uh, an invocation of function is called greeter and a parameter that is tom hmm? so greeter as a variable variable equal greeter of tom greeter is a function that accepts a name 
as a parameter, get the name in a variable that's called my name, and then define an inner function that is called hello. Hello is a function that does one thing, returns a string made by hello space my name. Mm? So the inner function can access this variable because it's of the function that contains it, and this variable is the parameter. Mm? So nothing strange up to now. So this function, when called, will return hello, mm? in this case, with Tom, will return hello Tom. But notice what happens here. What happens here? What is hello? We are returning a function. We are not calling a function. There are no parentheses here. We are returning the reference to the function. And it's possible because a function is a, an object, so we can do whatever we want with function. So here we are not saying return the execution of hello. N return hello plus my name. We are returning the function. Mm? So this thing here, the object connect the reference to the function. So here, hello Tom is a reference to this function. And hello Jerry is a reference to this function with my name put at Tom and Jerry. When we write console log hello Tom with open and close parentheses, and here we are calling the function for real, we are calling this inner function. Hmm? This one defined here with my name in the scope of the outer function, because my name is, was defined outside. Hmm? And even if my name is defined outside, this works. And this prints hello Tom in one case and hello Jerry in the other case. This is possible because we are returning a function clearly and not the results of an operation. And even if here in this line, the greeter function does not exist, it's not executed anymore, it's not active anymore because it was called here and now here is not called anymore. We are outside of the greeter function execution. The hello function still remember the values of the scope, each scope at the scope of the bigger function. So keep it, it keeps in mind, let's say, my, the value of my name. So when executed here, and here is where we execute them, because it's, we have the parentheses, we are going to execute the function in that specific po moment, this function is executed, and we can say return hello plus Tom in the first case and return plus Jerry in the second case. This is the closure, a, a, an example of closure. A function that even if the outer function does not exist anymore, uh, is not active anymore, hmm, because we are clear outside of Greeter, still maintain the scope, not only its scope, but also the scope of the, of the outer function that contains it. And here there is what I, what I said, that's written that the scope of a law has access to the greater scope, etc. And it's still accessible if a greater has been destroyed as a function in memory. And we can use closure. We will met closure at a certain point while doing other things. So we, at a certain point, maybe somebody will ask, will will pass to us a function. So we. We, we, can't, we have to remember that this function has access to the scope of the, inner of the outer function, and we, then we can use the function. Uh, but we can use closure to emulate objects, for instance, if we want. We don't typically want to emulate objects with closure, but we can. Hmm? Because functions are objects, so actually we are emulating the behavior objects, but actually functions are objects, so we are having functions that are objects that are emulating objects. So it's, it's it's reasonable that it's possible. Hmm? So here it's, a, it's an example. We have counter, and the inner function is get next. Get next increments value that is defined here by one, and then does a return. And we return get next. We return the function, not the execution. So here we can call counter and memorize the reference to the function. And every time we call count one, that is this reference, it will print one, two, and then three because it starts from zero, add one, 
then it remembers the value becomes one and then it increments again and then remember that this value becomes two and then increments again and becomes three and if we create another variable called encounter the things will start again because that is another calling of counter so it's another scope hmm? it's another execution but still count two in this case will remember the scope of the outer function so in this case we'll increment value even if we are outside the execution of counter hmm? another concept that are nice and it's not particularly difficult is the immediately invoked function expression ife they are function that are declared and executed immediately that's why it's called immediately invoked function expression is a function expression described as a function you see function let a equal 3 console log a it's a function that prints the content of a so prints 3 on screen that is that has one parenthesis that is inside one parenthesis and then it's executed so we define a function and we immediately execute it and this function could be also put in a, in a variable but it's not really useful put in a variable so this is a function that is created executed and discarded so it's called it once and discard everything you, you cannot reuse this function if you need to do one operation quickly and just once you can instead of creating function and calling the function you can just create and immediately call the function and then you are not going to reference to that function anymore in your code it just for one time and this is are called immediately invoked function expression because they are function expression again that are immediately invoked and then discard it forever hmm? this is again not not particularly complex but a little bit strange hmm? you have a function you can not only define a function but also call it in the moment in which you define the function immediately hmm? with this parenthesis here and then uh, yeah well, you can emulate object but we really are not doing to emulate object with it if you have something so a uh, immediately invoked function you you typically use it not very often but when you use it you use it for maybe that kind of operation that you want to do just once in your code maybe you have something more complex uh, and you need to produce maybe one result for that and and then you don't care about the function so you can write that as a function and then execute it and uh, you don't need to refer it anymore maybe you want to computer square hmm? you create an immediate invoked function you compute a square and you you don't care about computing it anymore in the future that is a typical one, uh, case case study you have a function you want to create it you want to protect the scope of the function you don't want that the variables created there are actually used after with the closure etc so you protect the function the scope and you use it and compute it so the square is actually you can also do in code without a function clearly because the square is simple but if you have a, a longer function a longer operation that you want to just execute once and then you are sure that you never will need that the the immediate executive function are uh, the, the, this is one of the typical use case for for those any other question yeah the other one is just putting a variable but it's you define a function you execute and in the variable you are probably undefined but yeah they're equivalent mm -hmm. so here the, the key points also of this is that may protect the scope of variables and inner function because you can have uh, immediately invoked function expression that inside is another function so all of this is protected as a scope because it's just executed and discarded 
um, construction function hmm? the, the things that you in other programming language called constructors hmm? so here we have functions that are used to let's say build an object hmm? so for instance here uh, you have a function that's called car that takes three parameters and define that make the make internal variable to the function is assigned to the value passed as a parameter the model as assigned model here as assigned here and here you have a method that is called is new that uh, return hmm, a boolean that is true if here the here past here is greater than 2000 otherwise it's false hmm? uh, this actually is not a function is uh, is an operation i think um but anyway you hmm? so this is you build an object an object like in other programming language and this has two properties the first one is that you can use this so in JavaScript there is a keyword as in other programming language it is called this that has a series of rules specific rules that we are going to see um, but basically it works like this in other programming language so this dot make equal make assign the make value passed to the function to the internal uh, make variable of the object and by convention construction functions start with a capital letter this is a convention it's not mandatory but clearly it's a convention to say that these functions are different from the normal function that instead not don't start with a capital letter and when you have a, a, a construction function you can then at a certain point the code write let variable equal new and call that function and that will build an object my car that will have a property that's called the make and in this case is eagle as a value model that is talon tsi and here that is uh, 1993 and then yes there is a method that's called is new that is not here because it's not built it's built but it's not passed as a parameter hmm? so we can say my car point dot is new open and close parenthesis and in this case it will tell us false because 1993 is uh, actually um, lower than 2000 so this is how we can build object object custom object similar in uh, the idea of classes but clearly they are not classes so we can create a function movie for collecting information of, of different kind of movies so avatar but not only hmm? so hmm, we, we can try to, to do that um, function and it's the last thing that we are going to do today movie hmm, with a capital letter and the parameters and we have a title what we add title genre and uh, uh, duration and so we can here write this dot title equal title this dot we can also change names if we, we don't want to have genre duration we can also change name clearly genre equal genre and this dot time uh, e equal duration mm. so we can do whatever we want and we can also have a function um, a method is is long mm. there could be an arrow function let's say um, like in the example here so we can say if duration is greater than 
and you see here we are not building an object like we built before hmm? where for movies we say let movie equal and then we have title colon title comma etc we are building a, an object like like a class in this case and then we can create let's say the instance of the object or more instances of the object so let um, avatar equal new movie um, and title is avatar oh i forget one thing you strict uh, new movie avatar sci-fi and those number and then we can have another movie back to the future that is a new movie that is called back to the future uh, genre sci-fi and duration i don't know let's say that is not long one seven one seven one hundred and seventy hmm? so we are we have created a movie a container for movies and then two instances of movies and then we can also say uh, console.log we can also print them let's see how they pr they print out avatar and, and then we can also try to call the methods console.log uh, back to the future plus uh, dot is long hmm? and we can see what happens so let me open the terminal again so we can also do run hmm? from here i told you we can also go in the bug and see what happens inside the function if you want maybe we can try it when when we don't have a small monitor here so that we have more space maybe next week in the other room um, so we can try to run it functions and see we have avatar that is depicted in this way it's movie because the object the function construction is called movie and that has properties title genre time and is long and see is long is a function the value of the property is long is a function that is anonymous because it's a narrow function and then we said uh, back of the future is long and the answer was false because is long uh, where duration greater than 180 and i put 170 so clearly it's not long for by this rule so this is a construction function and we can create function we can create movies we can create if we get back to the exam score exercise we can create the exam construction function and then create one instance for each exam with also the information about the exam and then store that variable that object that is created in an array and have a list of uh, exams for instance mm -hmm. so and then we can create methods etc 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 okay any question mm -hmm. so Th this concludes actually the functions mm -hmm. we have this small part that is about dates to do but it, it is needed by the fir for the first lab so it's not it's not something that we need to do now we can do it uh, next time but it's a really short um, but we can also build in this case a project mm -hmm. and show you how to install a library an external library because for ending dates we are going to use an external library mm -hmm. so next time we're going to start with these dates and then move on on functional programming and maybe another exercise in the three hours okay so if you have any question i'm still here while i unplug everything <laughs>